Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be, where you're listening to this message. This is a message from the Lord. It's a short one. And it's a word of hope. It's a word of hope. And we're going to be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. And this message is for all believers. It's a word of hope a word that will encourage you and I, a word that will keep us, that will make us, get us excited in the Lord, excited in our kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a message that we keep us standing when all things around us are failing in the world, praise the Lord. Father, as I bring the word that you gave me to your people, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our God and our King. Thank you to bless somebody, to encourage somebody this week. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. And first of all, I will read from the King James Version. I'll be reading Ephesians 1, 12, um, 13 and 14. We read. In whom ye also trusted, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. The word of truth is the word that Jesus came to die for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the word of truth. Simple and straightforward. Whosoever. So if you are the whosoever, you belong to that whosoever, and you have accepted that word of truth, the Lord is speaking to you. Says the gospel of our salvation, the gospel of our salvation, in whom also, after that ye believe, ye were sealed. That's where I'm going. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So if you want to title this short message, you will say, our seal, you know, our seal, you and I will be sealed. We've been identified wherever you go. That seal is on your forehead. You may not see, we are spirit being. The Lord knows you and the devil knows you also. So we are sealed. For those who can see, who operate in the spirit realm, they can see you, they can identify you because our Lord has sealed us. And how are we sealed? It's with the Holy Spirit of promise. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, okay, Holy Spirit, really? Uh, okay, I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. What is that for? I know it's an identification. But where I'm going to is that verse 14, which is where the word of hope comes from today. He says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You can say, but Pastor, give me that. So KJV, come on. What is that earning? Inheritance, redemption, purchased possession. I will bring it to us, the, the um, other simplified version of that uh, verse, say, verse 14 so that we can understand. But if I go a step back, you know, it says the gospel of salvation, which we have believed in. It now says, when you were marked in him, this is the C part of verse 13, Ephesians 1, 13 C. When we believed, we were marked and with a seal, which is the Holy Spirit have told us that. Another version says that we were sealed with the Holy Spirit, which God promised. And you know, he promised us, hey, I will send you a comfort. I said, promise of the Father. He says, the power from on high, the power from on high. So the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father is the power from on high. Amen? The power from on high. And it also says that we were sealed with that Holy Spirit, which is on earth 
right now. Amen. It's on now. It's in you and I. Holy Spirit is a personality. It's a, I don't want to call him a person. He's a personality. He has feelings. He can hear. He can talk. He's talking through me now. This message is not mine. He's enabling me. This is, you know, this time that I'm recording it, it's not by my power. It's not by my mind but by the spirit of the living God, amen? So he has, he has enabled me. He's living inside of me. The Bible calls him the, 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 that Christ in us, the hope of glory. How does Christ dwell inside of me? It's through his spirit that he gave us. The third person of Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, amen? So that third person is living inside of me i will now read the verse 14 in other translation new living translation says who is who the holy spirit is a deposit that's where i'm going guarantee our inheritance until when we are redeemed when christ comes back for us when we are lifted if we are still alive and if we are dead in Christ, the dead in Christ shall rise first. He says, until the redemption of those who are God's possession. So we already have a deposit. You know, when you need a house, when you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, then they say, hey, put a deposit down. So already God has given us that Holy Spirit as our initial deposit of the inheritance you know you're going to get the car you know you are going to buy a house so you put a deposit down to guarantee your interest your intent of buying that house praise the name of the lord so god has given us his holy spirit as a deposit listen to what new living how new living translation would say he said the spirit is God's guarantee hey, that he will give us the inheritance in promise. What is the inheritance in promise? You know, Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you that where I am there, you may be also. I've gone to prepare. The word of God tells us several places that are mentioned God has, has promised. Even I tell the Lord, I'd rather be a gatekeeper at the house of my Lord, in the court of my Lord than to dwell in the tent of wickedness, the tent of unrighteousness. So wherever I may be in heaven is still better than this earth that we are living in. Praise the name of the Lord. The street is paved of gold. If I don't have gold to wear on this, I, I will not even bother because I'll be walking on the streets of gold. Glory, hallelujah. So God, the spirit is God guaranteed that we give us the inheritance he promised. God has promised not a liar. He's not man like you and I, that we change our mind when we don't like that person anymore. We change our mind when we don't feel like our giving, our promises are dependent on our feelings. So if I don't feel like, then I can withdraw my promise. That's not God. Whatsoever he says, he will do. Whatever he's not going to do, not that he's not capable of, but whatever he will not do, maybe at a certain time, maybe at that time, no, it's an answer with God. Wait, it's not yet time, it's an answer with God. And yes, it's an answer with God. So I just want to tell us that whatever God has promised, because he's faithful to his word. He said his word will not go void, he will not go back unto him. But it will perform that which he has promised, and he will be, uh, send that to us, to whosoever he has sent it to prosper us. He says, as the, as the rain comes down, if you do want me to read it in the book of Isaiah, as it is just coming to me now, that the word of the Lord will never, ever return void unto him. It's in Isaiah 15. 54, praise the name of the Lord. I can see 55, verse 11. Isaiah 54, verse 11. So shall my word be, so shall my word be 
that has gone forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. So this promise of the Holy Spirit, which our Father gave on the day of Pentecost, and has given to as many that believe in him, you are the measure of that Holy Spirit the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So it's a guarantee of all the things God has promised us. He says, it will not return void unto me, but it shall accomplish that which he pleases. He will accomplish that which he pleases, and it will prosper in that which he has sent us to. So the Holy Spirit is a guarantee of the inheritance that you and I have with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have him. We have it in heaven. Amen. And I saw so, so I love the Berean, Berean version, the Berean study that he says is the pledge of our inheritance. Hallelujah. When you put a pledge and say, I'm going to do this, you know, at certain, certain time, I'm going to come back for uh, the full payment. This is my pledge. And you put it down and glory. Hallelujah. The Lord has already given us the Holy Spirit as a pledge of our inheritance. We have an inheritance with Abba Father that where Jesus is, there we may be also. We have not been there. Some people have been there and come back. I've not been there. I've seen glimpses of that beautiful pearl gate, but I've not gone into heaven. The time I would have gone to heaven, Abba Father brought me back because I had a baby to look after and three children. So, but it was glorious. I saw the angels. I didn't go into it, but there is. We are, there are promises of what heaven looks like, of how heaven is. There is one thing I know, there's no heartache. There's no disappointment. There are no tears. If you are weeping right now, God will wipe the tears away from your eyes. At this time, when the pandemic is, is um, snatching lives of our dear ones, I pray this evening that in the name of Jesus, the comforter, which is this same pledge, this is the same guarantee of our inheritance, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the power from on high, the mighty rushing wind, the still small voice, is the pillar of cloud by day, by night, and the pillar of, of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night is the still small voice, is the seal. We have been sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. And this same spirit is the zeal of the Lord of all. When there are things that are challenging in your life, know that you have the Holy Spirit of promise, this, the, the, the guarantee of our inheritance, the pledge, the first pledge of our inheritance the promise that we are going to, you know, enjoy better days when we get to heaven for eternity. For eternity is not only a small time you enjoy, it's for eternity. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So this time, this word that the Lord has asked me to bring to you is that as many that has believed in his name, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God has identified you as his own. You are his prized possession. Glory be to the name of the Lord. His prized possession. Jesus Christ poured his blood. He suffered for you and I. He paid. So therefore, you and I, we are what? We are the, 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 the value of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you will think about that, if they are saying, what's your value? If anybody can put a valley on the son of the most high God, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the Bible of Gilead, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse, the ancient of days, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is coming, the reigning king, the coming king, he's seated on the right hand of God the Father, from on high, where he's ruling and reigning. And one day he's coming back for us. If anybody can put a price, on the author and the finisher of our faith. If anybody can put a price on that, let that person now tell us that we are not worth anything. So this evening, as I close, you know, this uh, podcast, this uh, message, I want to tell us that we are the prized possession of God and that Abba Father indeed 
is is um has paid the pledge on you, has paid the guarantee on you, has paid the deposit. I call it the, my earnest money deposit. He deposited it so that when he redeems me from earth, I have an inheritance waiting. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanks for watching. If you love it, please send it to other people.